I'm your host, Al. Biggest day of racing of the year at Woodbine, the prestigious $1 million King's Plate Stakes, oldest race in, the, in Canada, actually for uh, uh, Northern United States. Uh, since 1860, yeah, when it first started, it was called the Queen's Plate Stakes, but now it's the King's Plate Stakes. And today, 17 three-year-olds are scheduled to go to post in this $1 million race. And not only is the King's Plate Stakes itself makes it an exciting day, but what really makes it exciting for the horse players, at least for me, that I have spotted, there are four live long shots that can beat the favorites in this race at a price. And I'm going to be taking a look at all, all four of them, breaking them down a little bit. And hey, let's make some money. And I'll also mention uh, different ways you can use these contenders. So pricey horses. So I'm going to start right away, get right down to brass tacks. And the first thing I'm going to do is let you know why I think both of the favorites are vulnerable. Okay, the, the morning line chalk. Uh, Mr. Turf Racing in America, uh, Chad Brown gets the three to gets assigned the favorite uh, for Kalik. Now that's the breaks from post number six. Now it has some nice numbers. Uh, Brisnet looking at the Brisnet numbers, looking at the trips. Uh, last two numbers a ninety. It was a G one here uh, in the last race. Ninety four before that one a G two. Why don't I like this one? Well. For starters, this one has never run on the old weather track. Now you're asking a lot. Chad is going to come. Okay, he's one for five going back here at this meet. 20%. Tremendous. Do you think they're going to let this guy come in here and steal this race? Not just that, but again, this one, Kalik has never run on the Tapita. Now, uh, Kalik does keep his regular jockey. Uh, no, he doesn't. Or, now, Kimura is riding this one for the first time. That's what I wanted to say. It, it doesn't keep his regular jockey or tees usually aboard uh, for riding if, in, at Belmont primarily. It did a little Gulf Stream running. But I think this one's up against it. Kimura riding it for the first time. Yeah, Kimura's strong, 22% jockey here. But Chad Brown, okay, he's coming in from out of town. The horse never ran on Tapita. And I see this one is vulnerable. And I'm going to get back to him later, too, you know, as far as the exotics go. But to win this, I don't see it happening. And the other one, the four to one shot, opens on the inside, Stanley House. Nice horse. Now, this one ran a, a 90 Briz net here at a mile and 16th, two back. Last race didn't run that well. Went off as a favorite, burned money, finished sixth. So why don't I like this one? Well, now, just like I'm not crazy about Brown coming in with a horse that never ran on uh, Tapita, um, you have the you, you're pinned on the rail, number one. And this one is not the type that has the speed to get out of there quick. So he's this one's going to have, he's up against it on the rail. And he gets a jockey, Castellano, who has not ridden here in, in who knows how long. He shows a zero record here at this track. And again, just like Brown, they're not going to let another guy come in here out of town or and steal the uh, King's Plate. So I don't. I see this one's vulnerable on the rail. I see the six vulnerable, having not run on all weather, and and the trainer. There are other trainers that are better than Michael D. Polo, uh, who has a thirteen percent here. No world beater though, twelve percent for twenty twenty three overall. So get that out of the right way. Number one and six, I don't like either of them to win. And you know Chad Brown is going to take money. That opens the door up for us. So who is the first of these four that I like that could win the King's Plate? We're going to go just outside of Stanley House. Number two, opening at eight to one, Ellison Field. Mark Cassie, the trainer. Mr. Inter, one of the best international trainers, oh, I guess between Canada and United States. He wins no matter where he goes. He always has his horses ready to run. Here at Woodbine, going back 283 races, 21% win percentage. And, he keep, and this one keeps its regular jockey up, all right? The one in six I talked about, 
Neither of them had the regular jockey up. Although Castellano did ride uh, Stanley House once that. I uh, did ride him a couple of times at Gulfstream Park with a fifth place finish and a fir first place finish, but not here in Canada. And he hasn't been riding him lately. So Ellison Field and a jockey, uh, Sivachi, uh, Sahin Sivachi, I guess at 24% at Woodbine Jock, teamed with Mark Cassie. Won the Oak here July 23rd. 91 Brisnet coming from behind. Now, this is a pressing type, and this sets up well for him. And this one is fast enough, even though he's a pressing type, he's fast enough early that he should be able to get a position. So I like that. And this one just keeps getting better. And as a three-year-old, as they mature out of hard spun, eight to one. So you got the strong jockey, the strong trainer, Cassie, uh, Savachi, and this one at Woodbine. Three win, three races, two wins, and a second. Loves the track. Overall in the Tapita, four uh, starts, two wins, and a third. So, but three for three, first, second in the money, and you're getting a price here, eight to one. So number two is one of those live bombs, or long shots, Ellison Field. Now we're going to move to the outside to live long shot number two. Number 11, Touch and Ride. This one opens at 12 to 1. Lightly raced, not stakes tested, but an early depressing type who has been comes off a very impressive uh, speed figure, winning by five and a quarter. Again, this one came on with this unbelievable closing kick. So I think the mile and a quarter, that last race was at a mile and 16th. Mile and a quarter, I don't see that as being a problem. I know only two career races, one for one at Woodbine, one for one on the Tapita. Its only other race was on turf. Uh, its first race at a mile it was closing very well there, making up ground and finished third there. And what I love about this one, Touch and Ride, keeps the same jockey. Uh, Josie Campos has ridden this one, both career starts. So that's something that the two and the 11 have in common that the favorites don't have, they're keeping the regular jock. And the trainer, um, Gil Forte, 16% here at Woodbine, and um, Jose uh, Campos, 10% jock here, but do, does very well on this one, number 11, touch and ride, and you're getting a price 12 to 1. Now we're going to move to long shot number 4. Now get this one. We get Mark Cassie again. Number 13, Paramount Prince opens at 10 to 1. Paramount Prince opens at 10 to 1. Keeps its regular, we told you about Mark Cassie and his 21% winning percentage. Keeps its regular jockey of the last two races, uh, Patrick Husbands, who's 25% here at Woodbine. It gets better. This one is the speed of the speed. Okay, it's going around distance, but it actually closed pretty well. It closed, it, 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 it ran away. At the second call, it was up by a half a length into the stretch, up by three, finished winning by five. And uh, this one, finished winning by five. Off a 91 Brisnet figure. So, the, and, and husbands, uh, again, 25%. And Cassie, so Cassie, you got two entries by Cassie in here. So this one is probably going to try and run off and hide. That's his game. Done. The, he's wired the field uh, in two of his five career starts, five career starts, two wins in two seconds, all of them here at Woodbine. And the other start came in third, two wins, two seconds, and a third. Never missed the board and opens at 10 to one. So number 13, Paramount Prince. And the last one, the, the fourth one, I just, you know, I wanted to put together a list of five, but I only felt comfortable really with four of them that could get it done, that I felt comfortable could get it done over the favorites and also work well together because of their 
uh, assorted running styles that they can even be used together in exotics. And number and the last one is number 15. Wow, how do you pronounce this? Coca poo. Coca poo? Okay, number 15 opens at six to one. Okay, it's not quite as long as the other ones, but this one has a very impressive running line. If you go back three, five races, five races, it has never finished worse than, than second, two wins in three seconds, running strong, very consistent numbers, seems to be moving forward as a three-year-old, as expected as he matures and, and gets older and starts to fill out. Here at Woodbine, Kakapoo, um, eight career starts, two wins, and four seconds. So first, second, six out of the eight career starts, and... At three-year-olds already a 224k plus lifetime earner. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, trainer holder, Tedston Holder, 13% here at Woodbine, but keeps a keeps regular rider Rico Walcott up, who has ridden this one the last four times in a row, two wins in two seconds. Nice price, six to one. Who do I like the best out of these four? It's very hard call. I'm I'm I could, I like the idea that number, I like the early speed of Cassie's number 13. Uh, 15, very consistent. And this is another one that's fast enough early that it's an early depressing type that it should be able to get itself in, in position here to get it done. The four, the four that I like here, Number two, 11, number 13, number 15, all of them keep the jocks, regular jocks. Uh, they all have won here on this track and run well here on these tracks, and they have the speed figures to get it done today. So uh, These are perfect for your multi-race plays. Uh, for you exacta players or trifecta players, if you want to box them, you don't have to box them. They have uh, the 20 cent options, uh, and that will still pay something if you can get one of the bombs off the board. If you wanted to add a fifth, fifth, but a four horse exact the box, I have no qualms using that, you know, using them that way here today. The trifecta, uh, I would use these four. I would feel feel comfortable using them in the first two positions, and then maybe add one of the favorites, either the one, more so the six, in the third position. But if you wanted to do a five horse box and you wanted to add Chad Brown in there with these four. For this big event, you know, even if it's for 50 cents and you, you kick Chad out of there, but okay, there's a great opportunity here with these. So again, those are the ones that I'm uh, giving you for today. And uh, for multi-race play, multi race plays, I believe they are fantastic. Watch the board, watch the payouts, and ma let's make some money today. You know, they give us a great card, great opportunity to connect, knock them home. So good luck today. Hope that helps you. Share this with your horse racing friends. Help them make some money too. Best of luck today and win big. Thanks for watching.